I'm Mike Schnecker. The Internet of Things consists of a number of devices on the Internet talking to each other and sending data back and forth. Unlike the normal use of the Internet where you might have a terminal where you're talking to or um, interacting with it, the Internet of Things is more autonomous where uh, devices would be uh, sending data back and forth. Uh, many of the uh, devices on the Internet of Things are battery operated, portable, remotely mounted. So things like battery life are often very important to understand and uh, it's important to try to maximize that life by controlling the current that's drawn uh, in various modes of operation by the device. Um, what we've set up here is an example of such a uh, Internet of Things device. Uh, over here on the far um, side we have a um, small embedded module which includes an RF interface as well as baseband interfaces and a uh, CPU module, and basically a self-contained um, Internet of Things uh, device that can be used uh, embedded in many other designs. Um, in this case, we're actually using the cellular network to talk to the internet, so we have it set up uh, with the RF uh, port, the RF interface, air interface connected to the splitter, and we're actually mon monitoring um, the RF signal on the oscilloscope, and this is an RTO 2044 oscilloscope from Rodin Schwartz. Um, we also, in this case, because we're working with the, um, with the uh, cellular network, and GSM in this case, we need something to emulate a base station so that we can actually put the device uh, into operation as if it was connected to the internet while we're monitoring um, the signals. And so we have a uh, CMW500 uh, wideband communications analyzer. This instrument actually acts as a base station. So it's an instrumented base station that allows to a device to be uh, communicated with. We can do measurements like bit error rate and frame error rate as well as sending uh, messages. And there's a number of different things that can be done with this instrument. For this uh, setup today, we're really just going to set up a communications with the device and measure, um, in this case, the current and voltage being delivered to the Internet of Things device as it's operating. So this is really just going to act to call the device. We also have a, uh, a programmable power supply connected um, to the device to power the various modes. Now, um, first thing we want to do is we want to uh, communicate with the device over the air interface. So we're going to uh, command the CMW to send a, uh, to essentially call the device under test. So we're going to press this uh, button here and it's going to um, ring the device. That is, it's going to call a device. And what we're going to do is trigger the oscilloscope on receipt of that ring command. And, and it's actually an ASCII word ring sent over the air interface modulated in the RF carrier and the, um, at the baseband um, RS-232 or serial interface on the, on the board here. We're actually capturing that signal. And this is being done by the digital um, MSO channels of the oscilloscope. And down here on the bottom left corner, you can see um, the decoded uh, string the ring command, which is what we triggered on, and the trigger point is denoted right there by the green arrow on the screen, and also um, on the upper display, and this display here shows the time domain um, signal, the GSM bursts, the orange waveform, our RF bursts from the particular time slot in which um, the device is operating, and GSM has eight time slots, so we're using one of the time slots to communicate. And as you can see, the green trace that's, that's also superimposed on the um, orange trace is the current being drawn from the power supply by the IoT device. And as you can see, the current is fairly low, below 150 milliamps, and then it peaks at about 500 milliamps during the burst phase, and then it drops down again. So you can see the variation of the current over time. This is important information to understand um, because we want to make sure the device isn't drawing current when it shouldn't be and drawing the right amount of current during these uh, intervals. We also have the voltage displayed on the yellow trace. This is the voltage going into the device under test. And the other thing you can notice is that during um, the RF burst period, there is a bit of a droop in the voltage. So the, the, the supply voltage drops briefly during the ring period. Um, and this is because of the high current draw being uh, at the same time. But again, um, it's really a matter of making sure that the voltage doesn't go below a certain value so that the device operates properly. And you can see here it's really staying well above 3.75 volts, so it's really not uh, drawing the power supply down significantly, just causing a little bit of ripple. And finally, we're able to show the spectrum. The spectrum in the bottom right corner is the RF spectrum. The larger spike here is actually our device um, transmitting, that's the, uh, the RF uh, channel that we're transmitting on. And then over here we've actually got the, um, the paging and sync channels from the GSM 
uh, Bay Station, in this case the CMW, that are always present. Um, so this is a nice overview. You can actually uh, understand very clearly the kind of uh, the way the power draw is is, uh, is happening during the various p periods. And we're using again the uh, the triggering capability of the oscilloscope to find the ring command, and then we're actually showing the power. Um, voltage and current being drawn. We could take a closer look at the um, uh, current use throughout a paging cycle. And what I'm going to do is change the setup on the scope so we can do that. So I'm going to switch to a different setup. And we have a method here where we can actually recall setups graphically. So this is the setup I was just using. We'll page over to the next setup. This is the setup I want to use to measure the current more closely. So I'm going to load that setup. And here we've got a slightly simpler triggering method. We're actually using the CTS signal from the serial interface um, on the IoT device. So every time um, it bursts to access the RF, it's actually sending a CTS command back on the serial interface. And so every time we see the power, the green trace again is the current, and the yellow trace is the voltage. And what we're measuring here is we want to understand how the current draw uh, varies over time and how much total current we're drawing over time. So um, in this um, section here that we show with a gray background, we're actually doing a gated current measurement. And the current measurement is shown here in this measurement window. And we're measuring about 2.6 milliamps average current during what we call the sleep phase. So the, the device goes, goes to sleep for 500 milliseconds and then wakes up every 500 milliseconds, pages the uh, uh, GSM network sees if there's any information for it, and then it goes back to sleep again. So this area here in the middle between the two bursts is actually the sleep interval, and we can see the current during the sleep time is very, very small um, at, at 2, point, uh, 2 milliamps. We're also showing the peak current during the wake-up time, which is about 100 milliamps. So during the time that it wakes up to check the base station, it's actually going to draw about 100 milliamps. So from this picture, we can actually determine how much battery life we can get from this device because we can measure the current that it draws over time. And in fact, we could work out um, the average current over an entire cycle and figure that based on the battery capacity, we can come up with some number about how many hours of life you would get out of this device. So a couple of things that we're showing key that are key in this display here are the, the ability to measure very small currents. Uh, we're measuring uh, two milliamp current levels, which is a very, very small current. And uh, we're able to do that because we have a very high sensitivity current probe we're using here with a uh, one volt per amp sensitivity. Um, and we're able to trigger again using the uh, digital line to find the CTS signal and trigger the uh, each cycle on that. So um, that's kind of a basic introduction, very quick uh, view of uh, measurements on Internet of Things devices, specifically uh, measuring things like battery life. Of course, there are a number of measurements we could also do, but uh, as, a, as an introduction, this is a, a good way to show how this can be done um, using Roden Schwartz equipment um, to test Internet of Things devices.